Are you new to homeschooling or considering it for the first time and wondering how in the world you're gonna get started and what you really need for homeschool supplies and what it's gonna cost you? Well, truth is you don't really need that much, so stay tuned and see what you really need for supplies to get started in your elementary homeschool. Hey y'all, I'm Laura, the creator of Live, Laugh, Grow. Welcome back, or if you're a new uh, visitor to the Live, Laugh, Grow site, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Today, we are going to be talking about the must-haves of homeschool supplies. I want to ease your mind if you're just getting started homeschooling. I'm serious. Don't go out to the teacher supply store, to, to the Target dollar bin, or load up your Amazon shopping cart. You don't need to do it. Yes, now we are the ones to that get to make the supply list, not another teacher, and we get to decorate our schoolroom if you have one, and we get to decide what we have and what we use in our homeschool, but you don't really need that much. So don't run out and get so excited about your new homeschooling adventure that you just spend a ton of money on supplies. Let's go through what you really need. Okay, so if you haven't been by before, um, you probably don't know, I am a relatively new homeschooling mom. So we started homeschooling about a year and a half ago. And so I know what it's like to start a homeschool. I've been there, I've done it, I know how much it costs, and I know what we really needed at, um, since I have elementary students that were homeschooling. I don't have high schoolers, so um, this is basically geared toward elementary students and what you would need for that. Oh, also, I should mention, if you have an unlimited pocketbook and you have unlimited space, go wild. Do your wildest dreams. Go to Pinterest, check out all these fun homeschool rooms and load up. But I'm pretty sure you, you're like me and you do not. You don't have an unlimited budget and you don't have an unlimited space. So we kind of need to stick to what we really need and what's really going to help us along in our new homeschooling journey. Really, you only need the basics. Number one, something that is free and something that I really hope in your area that you have access to is the public library. Go out and get your library card today. If you do not have one, you're gonna need one. It will save you hundreds of dollars in your homeschool. So, number one, library card. So last year, our first year of homeschooling, I had a pre-kindergartner, and a third grader. I wanna go through the supplies that we use the most and some of the things that I really feel like are must-haves for new elementary homeschoolers. We used binders, we used crayons, we used colored pencils, we had a pencil sharpener. Um, let's see, we had, I used a hole punch. Um, I would definitely recommend getting a printer that has, um, that you can copy with, you know, the printer, scanner, copier, all in one. I cannot tell you how many times uh, that came in handy because my kids use the same history and some of the same science. I had to make copies. Um, I wasn't able to use the student work text, so I would make copies. And as a bonus, if you don't have multiple kids, you can make copies and then you can resell the original book. So I feel like a printer, copier, scanner is a must. And then, of course, paper. We used printer paper to color, to do tons of stuff. So um, I know you can get a printer copper sc copier scanner um, relatively inexpensive these days. I will link um, a dis in the description what the printer copier scanner that we use. It has been um, just fine for what we need. Like I said, I go up there, I make copies, I print off things, and because I print off um, some of our curriculum, our PDF, I print that off, it's a color printer. So I use it quite regularly. I'll link in the description which one that is that we use and paper, paper, and more paper because not only do we use it in the printer, but we also use it for um, drawing and doing lots of other cool things. My kids are always pulling out the paper. So I do feel like those are a must and we use those a lot throughout the year. A three hole punch and binders for putting your uh, curriculum in if needed clipboards for on-the-go schooling. Maybe say you're going on a field trip or um, you need to go to the doctor's office and you want to do some schoolwork. Some clipboards really do come in handy. 
Um, I can't. <clears throat> I put our daily checklist on clipboards, and I can't tell you how many times you know we um, have an appointment that comes up and we need to go to, so we throw things on clipboards and use those. So definitely check that out. Those come in a lot of handy. Those are things that you don't necessarily think of. Okay, this was something I definitely did not think of at the beginning of our school year, and I'm not sure, I think maybe my husband finally said when I was going, I don't know what to do with all this artwork that we keep collecting. And I don't know if you guys have seen our homeschool room tour, but you saw we have this art wall. So about middle of the year, um, he said, well, what about teacher's putty? And so I don't know if you can see behind me here, the sight words that we have on the wall, those are all up with teacher's putty. And if you go check out um, our homeschool room tour, you'll see that we have this art wall. All of that stuff is on the wall with this plastic tack putty. I'll put exactly the one that we use down in the description, but that stuff, I, I know that's not something you would necessarily think of, but if you are doing lots of arts or even want to put um, like wall maps, you can't see all of my wall map, but that's a wall map, or um, other different little things on the wall, this putty is awesome. You put it up, smush it up there, and it stays. We even, <laughs> my kids made a little frog out of a rock, and I was e even able to put putty on the back of the rock, and it stayed on the wall for about a month before it fell. Um, so, I mean, I think that's pretty awesome that the putty could even get a rock to stick on there. So those are kind of unique things. Um, the clipboards for on the go and the putty for sticking things on the wall that you wouldn't necessarily think of um, as getting started in your homeschool, but th trust me, those things were pretty awesome. Okay, outside of kind of supplies, some things that I would recommend, um, you might have read about this somewhere. You know, in class, you kind of, if you go to a classroom, a teacher probably has um, a reference library. So I kind of tried to mimic that. We have a uh, children's dictionary. Um, and if you have pre-K right now, this may just come in handy for looking up pictures and things like that if you're going through different lessons. But I actually use it for my third grader if she asks me what a word means. I, rather than tell her what a word means, I have her look it up in the dictionary. Um, in third grade, she actually had to go through and learn how to find stuff in the dictionary and she actually learned dictionary skills. So we have a dictionary for on hand for when she wants to know uh, what things mean. Something that I did not purchase that I'm actually probably going to, um, we have been using it online, is a thesaurus. My daughter is in fourth grade now and she's learning to write and trying to do more creative writing. So a thesaurus, she's been using an online thesaurus to expand her vocabulary. But I really would like her to know how to thumb through there and kind of look things up rather than having to go back and forth on the computer. She can keep a thesaurus beside her and it would especially help for on the go um, if we're not able, if she's not able to have access to the computer. So a dictionary and a thesaurus would be great um, to have as a reference library for your new homeschool. Okay, so I'm not sure if you're able to have this in your homeschool, but if you are, a laptop or a computer that uh, would be accessible to you guys will come in handy. Um, I personally like we, um, through our science studies and actually history studies and several other things, I look up a lot of YouTube videos on like um, Discovery Kids and other things and we get to see kind of some things that we don't have in our natural environment where we live. We can look up uh, different animals in their habitats that have gone out, different cool snakes and different things like that. So, and my, my son used, I have a blog post out where he used Khan Academy for his pre-K math, part of his pre-K math curriculum. So he was able to do that on his computer. There are a lot of free homeschool um, curriculums that are on the computer. So if that's something that you're considering, um, I would definitely consider a laptop or some kind of desktop that your kids can um, access. I personally let them, when we do YouTube videos, we pile up on the rug and we use my laptop. But for typing, coding, um, and those sort of things, they have their own little desk nook. It's actually um, an old computer, I think, of my husband's that he kind of put together. So we didn't actually go out and purchase one. That was just something we kind of piecemealed together because we didn't need them to be able to do a whole lot of things on there. But if you're able to afford it, if you're able to find access to one, it does come in handy. I wouldn't say it's a must have, but kind of start thinking about um, technology and how you'll be using it and how big of a role it's gonna play so you can kind of maybe save up for that in future years if you're gonna need it.
Okay, like I said, you are the teacher now, but I will say, back to school shopping, take advantage of it. You're able to find crayons, color pencils, markers, glue, erasers, all those elementary supplies much cheaper during back, back to school supply shopping. Um, I was, it's August right now, I was able to go and grab Crayola crayons for 25 cents at Target. I was able to grab a pack of erasers. I was able to get um, some more glue, a lot of things just to kind of stockpile while it was on sale during the back to school supplies sale. So don't forget, even though we're homeschoolers now and we might have a different um, calendar that we follow, like we're year round homeschoolers, um, Take advantage of those back to school sales to get your supplies because like I said, crayons for 25 cents, you can't beat that. So how simple was that? I didn't have this huge long list. I didn't have all of these expensive things that you needed to have in your homeschool. It really is the basics. So resist the urge to go shopping and spend tons of money. I am going to, in the description, put a link to the blog post that I have that talks about must-have school supplies. You can check that out on there. There is actually a printable shopping list that you can go through and check off the must-have school supplies if you want to go out and start shopping and take advantage of those back-to-school supplies um, sales that are happening now. Also, if you were interested in learning how much we spent on our curriculum and supplies during our first school homeschool year, you can go check out the um, first year homeschool supplies or first year homeschool expenses on my blog. I'll put a link to that as well. Okay, seriously, like I said, don't go out, spend tons of money. Get into your homeschool, get into your routine. It will be okay if you don't have one little thing at that moment. Go out to Amazon that day and say, hey, I think we're gonna use this and order it then. Order things as you need them. Like I said, we, throughout the year, I realized we needed an electric pencil sharpener, but I had put it off and put it off, but I went ahead and made the investment. We got an electric pencil sharpener. I got the wall putty. Um, I got, I'm not sure that there was a whole lot else that I added throughout the year. Of course, in our history and science, I got supplies as they needed them. But really, don't go out, spend a ton of money, wait and see what you're really gonna need. Don't purchase things unless you're, um, you think that you'll use them, borrow things that you can. So it really is that simple, you guys. I want you to know that it's not a huge investment to get started homeschooling now. Um, be confident, don't think you can't afford it, don't think you can do it, you can do it. Just put in the hard work, get that library card that's free. Okay, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what I had to say and you wanna keep coming back for more, I'll post every week. And in the description below, you'll find all the details to everything that I talked about, whether um, the link to the blog post, the different supplies, different things like that, all kinds of goodies there down there in the description. And don't forget to give me a shout out and say hello. Tell me about your homeschool, what you think are some must-haves that maybe I might have missed that we don't use in our homeschool. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, guys, y'all take care.